Sorry about the delay. This was about a month and half ago. Central calls me, tells me I'm picking up a little boy with special needs and taking him to school five days a week until whenever. I am excited, I love kids. I go to bed early, gotta get this kid at 7 a.m. I wanna be sharp. Roll up to a ghetto-tastic house. Six boys, one mom. All the boys are special needs. Mom brings out this little guy, let's call him Franklin. Franklin is five years old, and he is the size of a two-year-old. He might weigh 45 pounds. I watch her strap him into his car seat. He's silent the whole time. He travels a half an hour with me to his school in Bangor. We're together a half an hour twice a day. We roll up to his office building of a school. He was silent the whole ride. I watched him in the mirror and all he did was wiggle his feet and watch trees go by out the window. He takes my hand as we get out of the car. We go inside of the building and his school is on the fifth floor. He holds my hand through the elevator ride. We get off the elevator in a very blank, white lobby waiting room. There's the elevator, the stairs, and one door. The door needs a key code to open it. No key code. Franklin wiggles my hand with his hand and points to the camera watching the door. I knock on the door, and in seconds a woman opens it. Blonde hair, blue eyes, red shirt, black pants. No shoes. Franklin starts through the door into a hallway with another door at the end that's open and kitty noises are coming from it. Teacher puts her hand on my chest stopping me. I nod and kneel down to Franklin. Hey Franklin, I gotta go, your teacher can hold your hand though. He looks at his teacher, then lets go of my hand and walks down the hallway. I shrug and stand up. She takes his backpack from me and forces me out of the doorway but shutting the door on me. I shrug and stand up. She takes his backpack from me and forces me out of the doorway but shutting the door on me. I glance up at the camera, then leave. Around 3 p.m. I arrive at the door. Two other guys, dads I presume, are in the room as well. Both are silent, standing near the door. The door unlocks and one little girl steps out. She smiles to one of the men and he picks her up. They leave. The door opens, and a little boy steps out. He seems sad. The other man steps over and rubs his shoulders before they walk to the elevator and leave. I step up to the door, and the door opens. Franklin's teacher stands in the doorway and hands me his backpack. But where's Franklin? I ask. He steps around from behind her and holds out his hand for me to take it. I take his hand and smile to his teacher. She shuts the door. He starts toward the elevator and I follow. He's silent on the ride home. When we get home, his mom comes to my car to get him. I tell her about him being quiet. Oh Franklin's just shy. Give him a few days. As she's getting him out of the car, he wraps his arms around her neck. Is daddy home? He asks. She smiles to him and strokes his head. Not tonight. She replies. Okay. He says laying his head on her shoulder and waving to me. I wave back and they go inside. After a few days Franklin starts talking. What are those? He asks pointing to the clouds. I look up and point to the clouds. Those are clouds. Sometimes it rains when they come around. Other times it snows. Sometimes nothing happens, they just float on by. He nods. I like clouds. I smile to him and we continue on. In the elevator, holding my hand, he looks up to me and asks me how high the building goes. Oh, probably into the clouds. It's a pretty tall building. I tell him pointing up. You're really tall, can you reach the clouds? He asks. Nah, I'm not tall enough to reach the clouds. Not yet anyway. I tease. Someday I'll be big like you, and I'll touch the clouds whenever I want. He said smiling. I have no doubt, pal. I tell him messing his hair up a bit. The same routine, I'm not allowed in. Teacher in red and black, no shoes answers the door. As he gets out of the car at home, at the end of the day he asks his mom again if his dad is home. 
she shakes her head and he reluctantly accepts it. The next day she has him loaded up and I ask her where Franklin's dad is. He's around. She said in a dismissive tone before heading back inside. The same routine, not allowed in, barefoot, red shirt, black pants. I stop her this time. He asks about his dad every night. I tell her. She crosses her arms under her chest and watches Franklin walk down the hall. All the children here ask about their parents. She replied flatly before asking me to step out of the doorway. I stay there for a minute, watching him as the door closes. I hear one of the security cameras crane around to me. You may leave now. A woman's voice, different from Franklin's teacher, says. I shrug and head toward the elevator, and the camera returns to wherever it was pointing before. On the ride down I take a look at the cubicle hell leading to the elevator. Everyone is running numbers, most of their phones are from the 90s. None of them look up at me. I find a lady at the end getting up to go to the bathroom. Hey, any idea where a good cup of coffee is around here? I ask. She stops dead in her tracks and looks at me. I have a boyfriend. She sneers and continues on her way. I snicker and rub my cheek for a moment. Is it listed on Google? I don't want to get lost finding that place. I shout after her as she steps down a darkened hallway toward the illuminated bathroom doors. I shrug and leave. This goes on for a few weeks, and I finally stop his teacher from pushing me out of the doorway. Wait wait. Why are there only guys here picking up and dropping off kids? I ask. She pretends to be blindsided and then insists that I step outside of the hallway. Children come here for a variety of reasons. Dads are usually the ones who have time. I know you're not Franklin's dad, so stop with the questions. She states. The door unlocks before she turns to it, and she enters peacefully. Please leave. The voice over the intercom instructs. All right, I'm going. I say putting my hands up. That afternoon, I pull into Franklin's driveway and there are a ton of cars at his house. All the boys are outside playing with squirt guns. They're chasing one guy, maybe in his 40s around the yard. He's very well dressed, red shirt, black pants, white tie. He's wearing shoes. Sneakers at that. Franklin spots this guy and sits up in his seat, trying to take off the belts of his car seat. Daddy's home. He shouts as his mom opens the car door. He jumps down out of the car and rushes over to this guy. Daddy. Daddy. He shouts as his man picks him up. I get out of the car, and the man in red, carrying Franklin comes over. He holds Franklin against his chest and offers his hand to me. Hi, I'm Dad. He says with a bit of a laugh behind his words. I'm David. I take his hand and shake it. Great to finally meet you Dave, I've heard a lot about you. He says bouncing Franklin a bit. Franklin giggles and hugs his dad's head. Good things I hope. I stated shoving my hands into my pockets. Great things. Franklin behaves better at school, he even eats lunch there now. Thank you for getting him under control. I don't know what you're doing, but please keep doing it. He says turning away from me and heading back to the squirt gun fight. I don't see dad again for a few days. I bring Franklin to school, the door unlocks and there's dad. He smiles to me, Franklin looks up at him and walks into the hallway not saying a word. I frown and look up at dad, Franklin lets go of my hand once he's through the doorway. Don't worry. Dad says patting me on the shoulder. I back through the doorway and he watches me as he closes the door, blocking my view of Franklin. I think about that for the rest of the day, and then when I get Franklin home, I ask him about his day. He tells me about ABCs, dancing, and playing with dinosaurs. I ask him about Dad. Daddy's not a school, silly. He says to me. I stare for a long while, before his mom opens the door and takes him out of the car. Did you have a good day? She asks Franklin. He repeats the same thing he said to me, exactly. I sit on the hood for a minute as she signs the paperwork for transportation. 
So, Franklin's dad, he works at school too? I ask. Nope, he's around though. She says and walks inside with Franklin. I shake my head in disbelief before getting in the car and going home. That night I get a call from Central, telling me that I need to wait after I drop Franklin off for school. The next day comes, and I wait. I wait. I wait. I wait. Waiting. Finally after a half an hour, an elderly woman, we'll call her Marge, steps through from the stairs, and hands me a clipboard with a piece of paper that says, I David Blankerson hereby declare that I will no mention the things I have seen, or experienced while transporting Franklin Blankerberg. Marge clears her throat and taps the board, telling me I need to hurry. I sign, and shove it back into her chest. Hell of a school lady. I state heading to the elevator. It opens before I push the button or before I get to it. I turn back, and Marge has headed through the door already, it's shutting behind her. Now this past week, Franklin has been having headaches. He leaves school rubbing his forehead. He tells me it's because of a new song. I ask him to tell me about it. He says he could cause it makes his head hurt. Franklin goes to school with two pairs of pants, and only wears long sleeves now. He goes to school a bit dirty. Comes home, literally smelling like roses. He still seems normal, we talk about dragons, and firemen who fight dragons. Haven't seen dad or Marge. Teacher ignores me when I talk to her, 